Have you heard? Amazon is now hiring for their new site opening soon in New Albany. Be one of the first to take advantage of launching a new career at one of the best workplaces in the world. Being a part of Amazon includes great benefits and competitive pay, plus many opportunities for advancement. So get a new job today and kickstart a new career tomorrow. Learn more about the perks of working at a new Amazon site. Go to Amazon.com slash start now. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. Welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast. I'm Danny Sheriff, your host, certified fertility awareness practitioner, functional nutrition counselor, and founder of the HA Society, and of course, an HA recovery coach who has walked where you currently are walking. This is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. So let's dive in. But last thing, nothing on the show should be taken as medical advice. So please seek the advice of your physician. The HA Society is taking clients. Coach Ashley and I work one-on-one with HAers, as we call you, to help you figure out a plan and, of course, implement it and stay accountable. Whether you've worked with a health practitioner already and you just want to stay accountable and strategic with the plan that they've laid out for you, or you want to start from scratch looking at all the aspects of your recovery needs and to create a game plan to reach those needs, then we are definitely your girls. When you sign up to work one-on-one with one of us, we're going to go over your history, your biggest obstacles, ensure that we're taking into account your specific goals and start making a plan to reach them. So those goals could be getting your period back, could be getting pregnant, could be getting back to exercise or sport, or simply working on your mindset around your body image and long-term recovery. We also can teach you the fertility awareness method. So if you want to learn that so that you have the skills you need to go out into the world on your own without fear of getting HA again, we have got your back. So our coaching packages are either weekly or bi-weekly and only a month at a time commitment. So you're not paying tons and tons of money for five, six months. It's month to month, which is awesome. It makes perfect sense for period recovery, right? So... To learn about other women's experiences working with us and to apply for a coaching spot, plus ask any questions that you might have before getting started, just go to thehasociety.com forward slash coaching. How are you doing today, Ashley? I am good. I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about our um, bi-weekly catch-ups, basically. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've just, we've put on the calendar just for listeners. We've put on the calendar to meet every two weeks and record together. Mm -hmm. My uh, headphones on as well, because I always forget those. So what have you been doing lately? Um, So I actually met with a new client today. I'm super excited. Um, So that's exciting. Um, I'm really enjoying bringing on new clients hearing their stories because with each new client it just you just learn more and more about people and the different entry points into HA right I, I think it's so easy to be like here's a blanket plan and while there's definitely pillars you know what I mean but just people's individuality is always just so fascinating because there's the answer the answer is in how they got there so Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The an- the answer it is in um interviewing the person. Yes. So I have actually been going down that rabbit hole this week of kind of explaining that to people a lot more. Like we look at we have like we all have to look at ourselves as a whole person mm-hmm. and not just um one like we're all females and that girl and I over there have you know, the same, we're the same age or we're related or we do the same sport. And like, I just hear that a lot. Like I'm the same as this one other person. And it's like, that 
one teeny tiny fact about you is the same as the other person. Yeah, that's like saying like we both live in Texas, but it's yeah. way hotter where you live. And like, if you live in Northern Texas, it's like more deserty, right? So it's like, there's so much variation. Yeah, uh, just, it's like the one thing you have in common is that like you're both runners and mm. that's that's really where it stops. So anyway, that's been like the theme of the Good. last couple of weeks is like you are unique in many many ways and like mm-hmm. you're coming from a different relationship with food as like a lot of, you know you see this a lot of people come with maybe serious like clean eating or orthorexia challenges some less serious some some haven't got that at all they just it's like I just you know, just obsession with like low calorie, highly processed foods. And they won't eat quote unquote clean foods um, as we understand them to be. So it's, it's like everyone's the same and different all at the same time. Yes. It's yeah. Um, on that note, I know I was like, yeah, we should totally talk about this. So do we want to dive into that or is there something specific? Um I mean, absolutely go for it. And then I have a couple of listener questions, but we'll get to them. Awesome. So one thing, so the theme, so on the topic of theme, um, and I think this is actually, I can say it's pretty common um, across the board, but the variation again is different is um, individuals who come to us specifically tend to be from a dieting background, right? And so what I see in recovery is this allegiance to vegetables, which I totally get, but then they're like, but then I'm going to recover. So I'm going to do vegetables and then I'm going to do treats. And again, there's nothing wrong with either one of them. I totally support both of them. But what I've noticed over and over and over and over is that they're missing the middle, which is just like the starchy carbs, like the potatoes, like you know, like the rice, the, you know, like the, uh, the carrots, you know, like the root veggies just, um, and this isn't about like whole foods or clean foods. It's just simply a category that I see is missing a majority of the time is like, so again, like, um, we tend to unknowingly function on this spectrum of volume veggies, fiber and then treats. And I'm like, "Mm, I don't think that that's going to get us over the line. I'm going to need us to eat the potato. (laughs) Yeah. I have the root vegetable complex. Like if we have any people listening that have ever spoken to me ever about food, the root vegetable conversation has come up um, many times. And, you know, truthfully, like it almost always just comes down to the fact that they're a bit of a pain in the ass to make, and they're not wildly exciting. So it's really easy for people to just look over. And I was one of those people too. It was like, I just made, I would have this like salad, I'd like lettuce and I'd have an apple in it and I'd do some nuts. And like, just the theme was, these were all very easy. Yeah. Oh, super easy. We're cooking carrots, take a little bit of time. Potatoes take time. You know what I mean? Um, rice and all those other things take time. Uh, yeah. They're like definitely the carbs that take a little bit more time. And so those other ones are like easily, you know, like veggies you can do raw or it takes like 10 minutes and then like it treats, you know? So the thing is that they're the reason that they're important that like we'll give someone a protocol that literally says eat more root vegetables yeah. is there, there are many reasons. The ones that come to mind for me, the way I look at it is like a, they come in a variety of colors, right? When you think about it and those colors represent different minerals and nutrients that like, if you just think color, I like what, you know, everything on my plate is green. Like what's a different color. Okay, cool. Beet. Okay, cool. Yeah. Carrot. Okay. Like, sweet potatoes and carrots and beets all come in various different colors too like yes <laughs> wild with it and so you're getting a, like a more of a range right if you just eat green vegetables you're all like for the most part you're actually on repeat there and i it really is crucial during this time to get that variety so i kind of see eating your root vegetables as like taking your multivitamin 1000 percent like it closes like any mm -hmm. mineral imbalances vitamin imbalances because think about like you're sticking to 
leafy greens and broccoli probably like I like like I know you well you probably eating zucchini broccoli and lettuce and then you're eating treats and it's like where's the nutrients right and so again we're not anti any of these things but no we're we're pro at we're pro include these things that's why I'm always like be careful like this isn't saying oh replace this replace that with this this is add this in Yes. And that's where I feel like they're like, skirt, you touch a tender spot, you know, spot because, because we want to swap things in it. Cause that's a dieting mentality is fine. I'll swap it. And we're like, hold the phone. I need you to add it, add please, it. Please include this. Yeah. I'll, I'll like make a note. This is <laughs> not in place of anything else. Exactly. I, and this is a good thing to talk to because most, most of us listening, you know, myself included, you have a really easy time skipping out on these things or getting hyper focused on like the calories number of it. Yes. And yeah. not not super focused on the variety, which then leads us to getting all kinds of questions like, hey, why am I getting digestive issues? Mm-hmm. Why am I getting like, why is my skin breaking out? And it's like, well, this is, you know, potentially one of the causes, right? Is yeah. like we're hyper focusing on certain like highly palatable foods or something because it's easy for recovery and everyone's talking about that. And that's super sexy in this space, but like, what about this? And then I also want to add the value um, of root vegetables before we probably tangent it elsewhere is, um, you know, they also help with the absorption. So if you're if of other minerals and stuff from the foods that you are eating elsewhere, right? So we know like cooked greens, well-cooked starches, root vegetables, these things, they don't just have their own mineral profile, but the, the balance of what you're consuming and the way they're made up of fibers actually helps you with your digestion and absorption of other various minerals. And this is a big one that we don't talk about enough and we should probably do an episode on, but the bouncing of your blood sugar. I was just about to talk about that. Yes. one thousand vegetables will balance your blood sugar, which is just like the most diety thing I sounds like I've ever said, yeah. but this, it's just like, you're doing everything else right. But when you include this blood sugar balance is like, ah, oh, finally. Well, so I'm so glad that you brought that up. Cause that was exactly what I was going to get to, because think about, there's not much glucose in veggies. And so we're like, I'm balancing my blood sugars by not putting any glucose in. So I'm eating veggies and it's just kind of fiber and water. Right. Um, so we're like, I'm not spiking my glucose, but you're not putting much in what you need for recovery. Right. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to add some in. And then it's treats again. We're not anti these things, but because these root veggies are low glycemic, right. And they're slow digesting. They balance our blood sugar level. So it gives us what are, what we need, the glucose and it's slowly released and it balances our blood sugar levels. And that is the magic behind it, right? Where I'm like, we're gonna need a potato for you to ovulate <laughs> or like a carrot or like a cooked carrot, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna need us to put something in the tank that's not like leafy, nothing and something that's gonna spike everything. The middle ground. Yeah, no, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the funny things is like the the risk there is incredible value and it really is like the lowest hanging fruit and the tier one area to look at is like calories right so we know that I think we're all in agreement (laughs) um and yes we do there are many many of us who where we do need to continue the conversation to like just be able to do that alone like eat more alone Mm -hmm. but this is you know this is also just like an what step two right is like balance the blood sugar get it and get it from places that are going to help your body do its job I don't know no totally I mean I think it might even be like part two of step one right because we've seen people who've gotten in enough calories but because their blood sugar levels aren't balanced it just doesn't make their hormones happy let alone Mm -hmm. 
like there's a complete difference of eating all your calories in the morning and all your and finishing the rest at dinner and having this large gap and a drop of energy availability, which we know impacts LH, right? And so that could be further down the road of recovery where yes, you are eating enough, but you're just not closing those small gaps and keeping your blood sugar balanced. So I do think it's like, obviously um, you can balance your blood sugar levels and not eat enough calories. So I think it's, I think it's a two part. Definitely. It's definitely just as important. Yeah. <laughs> eat your root veggies. We need a sticker. <laughs> we do. You know what else is? Yeah. But it would just seem like some kind of like vegan sticker. People would be confused. But <laughs> yeah. This, so, so next thing that I've been thinking about too, is the stress conversation. Okay. Oh, yes. So I think like, and again, I'm guilty of this too. Be, the fact that I'm guilty of all of these things is what makes me so good at what I do. Um, uh, like really this, uh, you're not counting in the impact of stress, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, at, at the very beginning for me, I was like, it, surely it's not that. And the stress conversation is so, so loaded, but I have been seeing some people who are eating enough and have been doing this for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, there's always room for optimization, right? Like we, this, the nutrition is a wild thing, but um, if, you know, for the most part, it's like the the what to do and the things that are inside of their control are actually under control right because like they're they're tangible I can go and do them I can check check the box and in fact I'm perfect at it Mm -hmm. um but something's not quite right you know and it's like when you start to kind of comb through the life the schedule the regime the expectations of themselves and of others like it becomes apparent that stress can play a significantly bigger role than we give it credit for yeah so I recently was just talking about this where I think so like you I don't think it's the main driver but I think it touches multiple components of recovery that if it is not addressed, then you can get someone like stalling out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh So if it is like, if like we touch all the areas, like I'm going to, you know, like increase my calories, I'm going to do the blood sugar thing. I'm going to decrease exercise, but I am still wanting to control the timeline I'm still wanting to control how much weight I gain. I want to control how much I look. I want to control this, this, and this, and this, Uh, or to the point where I'm still like freaking out about the food that I'm eating as I'm eating it. Like if you like those parts of stress are not addressed, I don't actually really think, I think for some people that is the hangup, right? And it's always this level of control that they're still seeking even Mm -hmm. through recovery. Um, which I think, well, I know it impairs our ability to actually relax, to actually eat more. Right. Um, and even how our foods digested. So if you're sitting there eating your food in a highly Mm -hmm. stressed out state, like you absolutely cannot absorb all of the food that you're eating. So calories, uh, vitamins, minerals, you know, all those types of things. Right. So it's kind of one of those things of, it may not be the driver, but we can't discredit that it has its hand on multiple parts of recovery. Yeah. I mean, because it, uh, it drives your behaviors mm-hmm. and also, yeah, like you were just saying, right. If you're never in a parasympathetic state, yes. you will have digestive issues. Yes. You <laughs> will. Yeah. You'll basically, you know, urinate out or sweat out or just have a buildup of various nutrients that you need and the body will respond Mm -hmm. like the the body will respond with what you give it 
or mm-hmm. don't give it. And mm-hmm. I think, so So that's kind of what I'm thinking on here right now with these people is, okay, so the piece that you're trying to control now, it's like you're now you're anxious that, oh, I didn't eat enough for recovery. Oh, I, oh, I, Ashley and Danny, <laughs> Yeah, Ashley and Danny are talking about the root vegetables and I didn't get any root vegetables in and now I'm freaking out, right? Like, yes, right. And so think about like, that's a component of stress that's impacting the way you eat, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, Like I have one client where she's like, no, I'm I'm going on vacation and I know things are going to get better. And sure enough, her temperatures went up. She was eating, you know what I mean? All because of stress. So yeah, it is such a behavior thing um, to not address it would just be a complete disservice, right? So to not walk someone through the mindset shifts and changes that have to happen um, is really like putting on a Band-Aid and hoping that it holds just to get like your first bleed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I guess like the message here is that you, if if you're sort of choosing you know to ignore the fact that you are basically in a stressed state at all times you need to check that you like stop with the it's probably not that Mm -hmm. thing or I'm not that stressed story I think that's a big one that most of us have is I'm not actually that stressed that's tricky because had you told me that I was stressed at the height of my HA, and that's when my digestion Mm -hmm. went, it tanked. I could literally probably eat five foods. Like it was so bad. It was so bad on so many levels, but had you told me that I, that, that, that my stress was getting out of control, I probably would have been like, yeah, well, it's a stressful time in my life, but I'm fine. I'm adapting. I'm doing great. And until I came out of that stress state, I was like, oh, that may not have been normal. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's you know, like, and it's but it's, it's, it's so, so normalized but it's so normalized like when people are you know oh I'm going through this thing but it's all good because you know next week's a down week or because I have a, a vacation next month they're like where where we, we have this checkpoint that we're trying to get to right um that's like when I get there then I can stop being stressed mm-hmm. that is a problem that we have so I'm going through a very challenging two weeks because for two weeks in a row my baby has been sick and has thus been sent home from our beloved beloved daycare (laughs) and (laughs) Jake and I don't like we both work from home we don't just like take like take the day off (laughs) to watch the baby for some reason we don't do that when we need to occasionally I have like I'll have to reschedule my clients but if I do you know then it makes the next week crazy so I just try to persevere and like get shit done while she's napping but it just it's not great like the laundry builds up and you end up you know like using your dryer as the wardrobe for two weeks I don't know if you do that. Um, Laundry is completely backed up. 100%. So I'll like sick last week. I'm like, I will walk out of in my underwear to the laundry and just get my clothes out of the dryer and get dressed in the dryer and go about my day. And when that's happening, you know (laughs) that I'm on the back foot a little bit with like my life. So there's that. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like when when that happens and we're we're trying to juggle who's watching her and trying to get this done while she's napping and we actually ran out of groceries too and now it's like oh god what are we gonna do and we have no help here um you know that is that is like actually a highly stressed time yeah it's normalized by people and it's like glorified by people and it's the type of thing that we can end up like in a loop on and because it happened two weeks in a row and in my head the first week I was like it's just this one week we just have to get through this week and lo and behold the exact same thing is happening and bleeding into the next week and I 
just reach a point where I'm like, I know how this goes. So I need to sit down and look at what's coming up and I need to remove a bunch of stuff. So that's the key where, so I had a very similar week um, and laundry is so backed up. And in the past, I would have been like, stay up, get everything done, push, 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 push harder, push harder. And now I'm like, you know what? You know what's getting taken off the list? Laundry. Y'all better just count your underwear and make sure you have enough. <laughs> but I think that that's the progress well of taking things off the calendar where before I would have never done that. I would have been like, I'm fine. I can do it. I'm capable. Keep pushing. And so, yeah. And so it did take HA recovery and me realizing that I'm not a good, um, I cannot see my own level of stress. And so I have to be proactive about it, right? It's not that Mm -hmm. I don't my body, but I know that my tendency is I can do it, keep pushing. So instead of even trying to figure out where the line is, I'm like, I'm just going to take a few things off the calendar and I'm just going to do life because that's what's required right now. (laughs) Yeah, I think the ability to spot that you have more on your plate than is reasonable, I think is is extremely important forever not just during this time and and so I'm like I kind of want to say that again right being able to identify what is reasonable because I think that many of us live in a state of well I can so I just will uh that that was my crutch for life um and so honestly if I'm super honest I know that when I start to have physical symptoms, I'm already past what's okay. So I will legit get canker sores Mm, and it it makes me stop and be like, hold up. I've like, like, I'm not at the threshold. I've officially passed it. Like we are officially past it, which means that I blew through the yellow, the orange, and we are officially at red. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so that's why, so for me, that's the gauge of, take something off. Like you're not proving to anybody that you're the mom that can do it all. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, I'm taking myself out of that race. You guys continue with your stressful life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Like taking yourself out of the race, the rat race. Like I will not like that. You enjoy yourselves. (laughs) I like that. Yeah. It's got y'all learning to slow down. That's so pretty much what all this is about (laughs) like sum it up (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) I that the other reason that this was important for me to bring up is because you had mentioned just now you know when someone goes on vacation oh like things start to look good and that's always awesome because we have this like evidence that it works but at the same time we're like yeah and life's not a vacation Mm -hmm. right I mean, or is it, but like, or could it be? And so my question is always, okay, well, what about vacation was so different to life now? And typically it's like, well, you know, I just ate whatever. And we, we lounged by the pool and we were just having fun and we had all these great conversations and it's like, legit, why is that only for vacation? I'm yeah. like, really think about vacation. What is happening on vacation that cannot in many ways actually be replicated at home from time to time? Like, what is this thing that we're doing where, oh, because I have to work, you know, I like, that's just, that's just it. And I can't put myself into this space where like I eat, you know, fun foods, right? I, I eat in abundance or I have a drink or I have like connection with friends or I go and do something fun or I like sit outside or take a slow morning or sleep in. Like, why does that always have to be just for vacation? So you bring up so many good things. So what you just said is, it's very interesting that on vacation, we unconsciously start to nourish our soul connection I sit and talk with my husband not rather like I passed dropped off the you know what I mean so it's connection and it's all these other things so no you may not be able to sit at a beach but 
I bet you nature, any kind of nature will get the job done. Right. So it's yeah. just like being in nature. So that simply means just like going outside. I'm not saying that going outside is going to solve your period. You know what I mean? But when I, but one of the things I was also talking about is, um, and with my client and she's, I mean, she's phenomenal. She is phenomenal. She's aware she's working on it. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like this is like, like this will be a life shift for her. You know what I mean? And she knows it. And so it's like, she's putting the work in, but it was really interesting that I was like, okay, so when you come back, one thing I want us to consider is we don't get to make a list of things to do as if we have 36 hours in a 24 hour day and you don't even have 24 hours. Let's get real. You um, may get 10 or 12, but we no longer get to make a list of 36 items, right? Meaning like, what does it look like to say, I can make a list as, and you know, like until the cows come home, but I am committing to only doing the top three in functioning. Like if I get the top three or the top two done, done like it's success it's success like no more like you don't get to be like two are done now shove 10 right because that's that that's that stress life that's a cortisol life that's not like living on adrenaline and cortisol right hence this is what so this is why it, it all matters of um and that will naturally have to put us in a position of learning to rest be still like find other ways to feel good without being like jacked up on adrenaline, trying to get through everything. Um, and it really requires a, I don't want to live like this anymore. I have to do something. And so just the exercise, it does a mental shift of you get three. That is it. You don't get to earn your validation by getting 30 done today. You know what I am like? You get one. <laughs> First of all, there's two things that I want to add on to what you're saying. I really liked what you said about like when we're on vacation, we nourish the soul. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the reason it seems to be so wildly easy for people to go on vacation and to nourish the soul is because it's socially accepted to do so. Yes. Yeah, it's like every no one's judging you, and everyone is in agreement that when you go on vacation, you go on vacation, and so it's yeah. easy for you to go and do. So it's easy for you to buy into. So you come back feeling great, but it's like not glorified or well received or whatever. It's like live your life as if you were on vacation in many ways, and I I don't know if this sounds crazy to anyone, but I honestly think about it all the time and I try to do it. I try to think like if I have something BS I have to do today, like go to the dentist, true story. Mm -hmm. I will try to schedule something into that day to help bring back like the joy. And it might even be something small, but it feels like, uh, it feels like out of the ordinary. It feels exciting. Mm -hmm. and it, it could even be getting a coffee from your favorite coffee shop. Like, you know, just like, I'm doing this small thing that like makes me feel this like little sense of like uh, fancy and foot free. <laughs> what the saying is, you know, I don't even know what the saying is, but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, how so can you insert a bit of that into your day? So over a year ago, I created something called the seven day HA recovery commitment challenge. And I've been running it for over a year. It was this free email based challenge. So lots of reading, but you would get an email every day for seven days to help you overcome and tackle the different but important areas that you need to be checking off in order to get your period back. Now, over time, I have collected some really great feedback and upon working with all of these wonderful, amazing women really started to learn even more about what works and what doesn't. And so I'm excited to be introducing to you guys the updated version. It's called the seven day HA recovery kickoff, and it is totally designed to help you not just commit to the process and have all of your ducks in a row in terms of important factors that need to be tackled and issues that need to be overcome in order to get your period. But the whole thing is now based in video. So you can listen slash watch and every day for seven days, we will tackle 
nutrition. There's actually two days of that because it's so big. We'll tackle lifestyle. We'll tackle exercise, your support network, your mindset game. Each video goes from anywhere between 12 minutes and five minutes. So it's not very long, but you'll get all of the most important areas and the best tips and strategies for how to implement them. Because I know that going through recovery is hard. There's always an area for each person that is a little bit difficult to execute on. And so the goal, or maybe a lot difficult. So the goal of this challenge is to help you have the the awareness, the self-awareness, and the tools and strategies you need to overcome each of the different issues that AHA recovery faces for us. So get on it. It's great if you're at the very beginning of recovery or if you're halfway through. I mean, we never know how far through we are until it's over, do we? But no matter where you're at, it can be a really good opportunity to check in and look for blind spots and areas where you might be dropping the ball in your nutrition, in your lifestyle, in you know, maybe it's your support network that's a problem. Maybe uh, exercise is something that you are still struggling with making changes to. So check it out. Go to thehasociety.com forward slash seven dash day dash challenge or the link will be. Um, on the website so it may be in the show notes of this show it may not be just go to the hasociety.com and you'll find it in the footer or you'll find it in the pop-up that happens when you are when you visit the page and we will see you for day one of the challenge well and then i like you bring up another great point of no one is like you hustled so hard on your vacation. Gosh, like you are so productive, right? No one ever thinks that, right? So, so it's interesting that we um, don't even know how much we buy into the social norms of what's, mm-hmm. exciting, you know? And so I think that's a really great point of, um, and then obviously like life is life. And so this is coming from two new moms who are like figuring it out working from home and you know what I mean so it's not like we're like and then everyone have a vacation day like have a yes day right (laughs) but but I do think it's one of those things of what if I didn't live my life so intensely that I needed a vacation yes that's such a freaking (laughs) you know what I mean like what if I didn't like drive myself in the ground you know yeah like living living your life on the border of your maximum capacity like what is it like what is it like to fill your day only to 50% capacity, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and so you're never actually reaching the upper limit of your stress levels. You know, we are highly resilient people. We can actually handle a lot, but we can't be healthy at a lot. Um, I think we think that stress means productive because I'm sure people are are listening and then like, Danny, I can't get all this done at 50% capacity. I'm like 50% capacity. Exactly. Stress. I bet you, you'd be super creative. You'd have solutions. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the internal subconscious. I mean, like I just had like a realization. I was like, I am no longer going to function with a subconscious frustration of like trying to work and have nuggy you know here some days I'm like I like like I will remove that because that is not the subconscious like mm-hmm. vibe that I want in my house right to the point where I need a vacation yeah I like that it's I, wild I mean so what you're saying right about like that we no longer get 10 to 15 things on our to-do list we yes. get three so um I am um, a colleague of mine kind of brought this up to to my attention too so I can't take the credit, but he was like, the, the thing that is most important, it will rise to the top. You really need to check in with what is actually rising to the top. And then, and, and maybe that's three to five things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then he goes to me now remove four of them. That one thing, that's it. Mm -hmm. and then when that one thing is done you can do it again Mm -hmm. but the thing is so so you only ever have one thing right Mm -hmm. because I think like the balance of one thing 
is, um, sorry, someone just slacked me something. The balance of one thing is much easier mentally to like juggle. And then I think the next piece to this, right, is being able to incorporate your need for a break, your need for self-care, your need to go and read a book, your need to go and take a walk or get some sun uh, into that list as with equal priority as that administrative to-do task over there because we also separate them too much my Mm -hmm. work Mm -hmm. my work or my housework or yada yada these are like things I need to do and the rest is like that would be nice and so it has a separate list and that list takes like is lower priority we need to get so much better at checking in with ourselves and saying is the laundry really the thing I need to be doing right now or you know do I need to take that walk and being serious you know or like that that work report I need to do maybe you do need to do the work report or maybe you need to go and do something for yourself and both will be okay and they they need to be in the same they need to be on the same to-do list and being like sorted out you know it's it's not work-life balance right they say it's work-life um integration yeah so think about that's what we do on vacation we make self-care the priority right and so that's not what happens in like real life and so I mean just to be super realistic like I just uh I just posted like this this reel where I was like I'm taking these 10 minutes before I jump on the call with you like there's 12 administrative tasks that I could have done but I'm like Mm. I think I need to just not talk to anybody and not do anything like I just need space and so I literally just laid here for like 10 minutes and I was like we're making progress (laughs) yeah so good what what do you do what do you do to like detach to wind down So what's super interesting is I've noticed that I'm in a season where just new mom season, right. Of where someone's always touching me. And so not that I'm touched out, but the dogs, the dogs are touching me. I mean, like when I walk through the house, I have a toddler and three dogs following me. That's not what happens when, when like Blake like goes through the house. Like I have a whole entourage. Okay. The entourage. (laughs) So I have noticed that I need a moment where, where I'm not building, creating, doing, fixing, talking, touching, or nurturing anything else. So I will literally lately it's been reading or Netflix. It just, cause I just need to be in yeah. a different world. Right. And it's just, but then I think that's also healthy because it's like, I can't be in a world where I'm constantly nurturing and touching everything like mm-hmm. I need to like mentally mm-hmm. not be touched and so I think that for me reading or like Netflix is like I'm gonna jump in something else like like what world are we jumping in today <laughs> yeah. so so I think that for me that's my wind down I mean I did just go for a walk today too just because like it's nice out I've been sitting all day so yeah I think it's just, you know, like, like it's always different. Right. But I think unfortunately with the walk, I will sit there and try to improve by listening to a podcast. And so like that comes, yeah, this is, that's so relatable. Yeah. So then I'm like, (laughs) but yeah. Yes. Um, I think that's all like most people have that, (laughs) like I am self-development, but okay. So for me, it's, um, cooking. So I, I'm like, I'm a speed slash rush convenience cooker. Um, and so it's actually really nice for me to like slowly properly cook something, you know, like Mm. peel the garlic, (laughs) like really intentionally, like do it the long way, the hard way, the correct way. So I, I do that. And I'll, I'll like, I will listen to something, but yet not self-development most of the time. I actually really burn out on that stuff. I go ham for like a month and then I can't for two months. So <laughs> I listen to um, a lot of uh, comedy podcasts, things that make me laugh. Oh, and yes. I, and Formula One. 
um, <laughs> podcasts, like just listening to them talk about like cars and relationships and racing. And I'll, um, you know, I'll really like dive into all the articles and check out like what, when I go on social media, I go and see like what the drivers are doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm all, I'm all in their business. Like who's their girlfriend? I'm all mad that like Max Verstappen is dating this other driver's like ex-girl baby mama and like you know who does she think she is this whole thing yeah so there's like you literally check into another world you're like Mm -hmm. this isn't my world I'm just gonna check into some other world I still I stopped taking my world so seriously yeah go and do something that's like a little bit mind-numbing you know and for other people it's trash tv and that's great yeah, no, when, yeah, like I'm currently on a Netflix docu-series. Like I just Which learned about uh, all of them. The bone <laughs> jet thing, has anyone? Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Excuse <I> me. <laughs> you know what? Like I've pretty much watched every air crash investigation. So anytime we fly, I'm just like, you know, dropping facts to Jake that I like shouldn't. Like, did you know that once a plane crashed because it was too heavy because they had like a whole hockey team on and they just didn't take into account how heavy hockey players are true story you know like uh, (laughs) it's fascinating yeah oh air crash investigation and the problem with boeing they're all great yeah no that one was a good one i was like oh my gosh but you know and i'm like right into uh netflix is bringing out a bunch of like european dubbed so they're you know polish shows and stuff but they're all english dubbed and they do a great job so i'm right into those like murder mystery single season series oh yeah yes <laughs> you know, netflix netflix dog netflix apple tv and disney recommendations are always welcome guys in the dms yes. please yes <laughs> yeah we need to do other things other than you know and so it's so like this is something that's like for our clients like that's why I'm like yes we're going clearly we're excited I'm gonna check your chart once a week trust me I'm just excited to see you ovulate you know what I mean but in the meantime like we have got to start expanding um and doing other things um because the quote that you said that has just stuck with me is that like health was never meant to be the end-all be-all it's just meant to be a vehicle Right. And so we just live in this society where it's like, that's my status. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like I know oh, like it was the pursuit of health was not meant to be so at the forefront of everyone's yeah. life. It's really meant to just be this like kind of natural, obvious thing um, running in the background. But, you know, we made a bunch of mistakes along the way. We're not there as a community anymore, but for you you know I, th- I think the goal is to get to a place where it's on autopilot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so and you like can we go through your life yeah like we learn through experience we we have a robust toolkit and now we're just busy like living life <laughs> good chats look yeah. we have a couple minutes right do you want to answer one question yeah let's dive yeah, in we'll we'll do this we'll do this one because two people asked a really similar question so i'll read both questions because they're both like very similar okay i'm listening um okay uh i used to know how to say this name and i've forgotten it hang on i'm gonna google it and see if it tells me the um the phonetic pronunciation for this name. So detailed. I would have just I, rolled it. <laughs> oh my gosh, should I? No, no, don't, because that's what I do. <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, it's interesting. It says on the Google that you pronounce this name Niav. I, I'm in disbelief. I, I, it's to me, it's Niam. The internet says Niav. N e e a v. So okay, Niav asks: Is it normal to break out during or after HA recovery? My jawline 
and cheek area is still very covered even post third recovery period. Following up to that question, tips to not relapse or fall into orthorexic tendencies again. And Jess Rhodes asks, do you get hormonal acne flares? Ugh. Do you get hormonal acne flare ups during recovery as your body healed? I'm about a month in and started to notice this and it's so annoying, even though it's a good sign, I guess. Does it calm down as hormones and weight stabilize? So good, because I'm actually experiencing that right now. So just for everybody who's not in our HA society, I actually did not ovulate <gasps> last month. Um, and so we're troubleshooting. <laughs> and so um, I'm back to temping. I just got my thermometer last night. I'm back to temping. I had a great temp this morning. Um, and I'm confident that I'm going to ovulate because I'm just throwing in more food and more rest and making some tweaks. Um, and so because my last cycle was an anovulatory cycle, I've noticed that my acne like is very much prolonged. Like it's not just a little bit before ovulation. And it's not just a little bit before, um, my period. It's actually probably, I would say it's the worst it's been because it's just been super con uh, consistent. And it's like down behind my jaw, like around my jawline, like, you know, it's like the deep ones. Right. Um, and so that lets me know that there's definitely a hormonal imbalance. And I know it's because obviously this last cycle, I was just really high in estrogen and I didn't get that progesterone push. Right. I so like, I didn't get that balance. And so, um, if you know that you are for sure ovulating in the first, you know, cause like the, cause like the one, uh, lady that was like, um, I'm three cycles in, I don't know, um, why like, I still have it. My first thing is, are you ovulating? That would be super important. Um, just so that we know that we're having balanced hormones and two, and this is something that we talk about it, you leading up to your first period. Um, hear me when I say this, you're technically estrogen dominant because you're building up your, your estrogen and you haven't ovulated yet. So you haven't had that progesterone come through. Right. So even though you're low in estrogen and not enough to ovulate, it's kind of the only one that's like getting this buildup. Um, and so that can lead to hormonal acne. And so obviously we want to focus on ovulating, right. And really making sure that you're not just bleeding, but you are in fact ovulating. Um, and then my other thing would be, um, probably around six months. I'd probably, if like, you're still experiencing it, I would probably get like, um, someone to test your hormones just to see where you're at urine or saliva, just to see. Um, and I'm not going to go down the sugar rabbit hole, although, because I know that's, that's kind of like your lane, because she was like, I don't want to get obsessed with orthorexia, which lets me know that she doesn't want to be like, cut out sugar. That's the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but it could also be a uh, blood sugar imbalance. It's, I mean, blood sugar balance is like, it is queen. Okay. It's connected to everything. Um, but so that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, the, again, it's not about swapping things out. It's just including, right. Including more. So if we, if we do look at the hormonal side of it, which is obviously what we're already talking about, um, like, so cortisol is considered a tier one hormone. Top tier, like we talk a lot about estrogen and progesterone and all of that good stuff, but like those things are actually, um, you know, receiving their, con their commands from hormones that are actually higher up in the totem pole, that being cortisol and insulin. So when we, that this is why nutrition is so important. This is why Ashley and I talk so much about you know, including the good stuff. And it's not that we're like, um, you know, fear mongering about junk food. That's not the case. It's that we know that 
these top tier hormones respond negatively to, you know, excess in stimulants, highly processed foods, yada, yada. And, and they react positively when our blood sugar is balanced. We're eating a good amount, a good variety of carbs, protein, fats. We're eating, um, you know, varied foods in all of that, those three macronutrient ranges. Like we're not just like, you know, going around and around in circles, eating the same thing every day. So when that stuff is in check, the body knows what to do with the rest of it. It's not trying, like, here's the other thing about the endocrine system. It's a three phase process, the endocrine system. There's the transportation of the hormones through the body. There's the synthesization, the usage of the hormones, and there's the detoxification, right? Where like your body has to excrete the hormones. Um, so when we are not properly able to do those processes, we see symptoms flare up in different ways from digestive issues to skin challenges, to mood, uh, yeah, you name it, skin being one of them. So I just, I tend to lean on nutrition as medicine for this type of thing to help and see if we can, you know, give the body what it needs to not raise cortisol, to then do the process of transportation, synthesization, and detoxification as it is meant to be, and thus like see if skin issues resolve. If that made any sense, I'm just like speaking as I think. Um, but, but like that, that's kind of always where my, my brain always kind of goes to like, okay, well, where is this all starting? And when I think back to like being postpartum, no, not even, sorry. When I think back to being pregnant, for example, I got mad back acne. I've never had back acne in my entire life. And I had them all over my body. And it, I, I just was like, this is such a cool like example of hormones. Just being, just being like, ah! you know that like that's just what it's what it is and I'm not going to argue with that like it clearly is and so when you're going through recovery and you start giving your body more food your body is gonna like a whole lot of processes are happening yeah and that's why I think it's so important if possible to hold out kind of like around like the six month mark if because like your estrogen's coming back online, your testosterone mm-hmm. is coming back online. And all the process of, of mm-hmm. the delivering and the synthesization and the detoxification, yeah, those are all know. relearning how to do their job. Oh, a hundred percent. Because a lot of people get caught up in like, de- I mean, this is for another day, but they get caught up in like detoxes and stuff like that. Well, if you don't have your period, which means that you don't have enough to run the HPO axis, um, you need enough energy to run the detoxing as well. Right. And yeah. so obviously your body is going to keep you alive, but all these little small things, you know what I mean? Like your body hasn't had to, uh, metab- uh, sorry, detox all the estrogen that you've made before because you stopped making it (laughs) you know what I mean and so like this is a whole other you know like everything's coming back online so um it would be really 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 interesting one to see if they are in fact ovulating Mm -hmm. two um what does their blood sugars look like you know what I mean just food wise and again this is adding in and this is not swapping or subtracting you know what I mean um those types of things yeah love it love love um and let us know if that was helpful um or if that applies to your situation because obviously context is everything (laughs) context is everything yes and and there's so much more we can probably like waffle on about on all of those things but i think like i think we're done (laughs) um yeah and like the maybe for another day the the talk like the conversation about the 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 tips for not like slipping back into these behaviors i mean Mm -hmm. this is where it all this is where all the work is like there there's not really any tips it's it's like you need to be actively addressing your intentions behind all of recovery and behind eating and Mm -hmm. 
you know, your fears and your why, and like, you just, you need to dive in and, and do that work. And only when you truly understand yourself, yeah. you know, can you catch those thoughts and then make a different choice. Yeah. So this directly ties into, so something like orthorexia, like, you know, like I don't want to get caught up in orthorexia. Right. And so can I focus on that middle category of carbs without that being a morality issue, that being an identity issue? You know what I mean? Cause I do think a lot of times, um, as we come out of something like orthorexia, we keep the veggies and we, and like, we do the treats and we, and, and like, we forget the middle, right? Because, you know, like we were so focused on whole foods before that we kind of take a break from it. And sometimes, sometimes that can create just some other, you know, it's balance. It really is balance. Yeah. I'm going to make a note for our call in two weeks time. Um, maybe don't hold us to it y'all but maybe (laughs) we'll talk about um like the process of what it looks like to sort of re-establish your relationship with food Mm, that's good that's a good one Mm. i'm down part part one of (laughs) ten i see you (laughs) all right well everyone thanks for hanging out Come check me out at Danny Sheriff or the AJ Podcast. Go see Ashley at Ashley underscore Marie underscore Smith underscore. And come and hang out with us at the AJ Society. Yes, for real. And yeah. any other topics that you want us to rant about? Yeah, <laughs> submit your questions, y'all. Um, Danny at the AJ Society.com. Email them in or shoot me a DM. Emailing is more effective. Uh, I lose DMs. But you know, you can try if that's easier for you. And maybe we'll answer your question on the show in a long format. (laughs) All right. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women. Have you heard? Amazon is now hiring for their new site opening soon in New Albany. Be one of the first to take advantage of launching a new career at one of the best workplaces in the world. Being a part of Amazon includes great benefits and competitive pay, plus many opportunities for advancement. So get a new job today and kickstart a new career tomorrow. Learn more about the perks of working at a new Amazon site. Go to Amazon.com slash start now. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. Hi, welcome to your neighborhood pharmacy. Hi, I've got a prescription for diabetes test strips. How much is the copay? Well, it depends on your type of commercial insurance and factoring in your yearly spend, subtracting the deductibles, also depending on your monthly allowance. Why can't there be a better option? Or you could try Contour Next test strips. A 35 counts only $19.99 over the counter and proven to be highly accurate. Go to contournext.com slash radio to see if over-the-counter strips are a more affordable option for you. Hmm, I think I'll try Contour Next.